Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Kiv, your favorite degenerate, and holy crap, things are gonna be heating up really good over the next couple of weeks because in the latest Inside Infinite, we found out a lot of juicy details, but I wanted to share really quickly some of the important stuff because it is really freaking crazy and I wanted to get something out there as soon as possible. So let's start off with the most important part of all. We are going to be getting two weekends in a row of multiplayer flighting. This weekend is going to be standard 4 vs 4 Slayer, and next weekend we are going to be getting Big Team Battle, which if you didn't know is going to be upscaled to 12 vs 12 in Halo Infinite. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is the best news I've ever heard. What a time to be alive. <laughs> but today, let's go over some of the most important bits of information. So this entire video is going to feel kinda disjointed because I'm gonna be swapping from one topic to another, just covering the most important stuff. Because realistically, this whole article, it basically needs hidden Xperia and a highlighter to just go through it for about 20 minutes odd uh, with a a whole bunch of lore and background info. <laughs> but unfortunately, if I was to do that, I wouldn't be able to get this video out on time. So let's jump into some of the most important bits that I noticed when I was running through this article. And one of the first ones is that there is potentially going to be a commander mode. This is really interesting because when Andrew Witz was being asked about Big Team Battle and what some of the crucial design pillars were, he answered by saying that one of them was to embrace the Spartan battle fantasy. And then he went on to say a huge paragraph, but the key sentence that drew my attention was when he said, that's why we've invested in things like Pelican Drops, Commander Mode VO, Weapon Pods Falling from the Sky to resupply the field, and a few more dynamic elements. We wanted it to feel like an actual active battle inside the Halo universe. The idea of having a Commander Mode is pretty cool, but I do have my doubts. Uh, I mean, Battlefield 4 tried to do a Commander Mode and, I mean, look, it wasn't the best because one player basically just sits through menus. So I hope that doesn't happen in this game. But moving on to the next part, they were talking about Halo Infinite's big team battle and how equipment factors into it. Now when they were talking about it, they mentioned that the biggest difference is the amount of equipment charges that you receive each time you pick it up. So when you pick up equipment in Big Team Battle, you can have up to five uses each time you pick it up off the ground for the first time. This is freaking awesome. I love this a hell of a lot because it means that they are thinking things through. For the grapple hook, if you only had three uses, players would not really want to use it as much because they would feel as if they have to save the number of uses. If you extend that to like five, then people are going to be wanting to use it more because they'll feel as if they've actually got more to work with. I think that's great and I definitely support this idea. I did skip over it before, but no, I have not forgotten, we have got a initial picture of the banished shock rifle. Holy crap, this thing looks freaking deadly, like, <laughs> the design for this is ridiculous. I love it so much, it is simple but detailed, it's slick, it looks badass, the colour scheme is awesome, and I don't know why, but I really love the idea of the Banished having some more unique weapons to just kind of even things out with the UNSC. I, I kind of get railgun vibes, but I, I think it's going to function a bit different to that. So yeah, but we'll, we'll see how it all goes uh, in-game over the next couple weekends with the flighting. Next up, they were talking about some of the new game modes and mechanics in Halo Infinite. One of the developers mentioned that a new game mode is called Total Control. Unfortunately, we didn't get much else than that, uh, but the name does kind of give away the general idea of it. Uh, it is going to be unique to Big Team Battle only, which is something I'm a big fan of. 
My personal prediction for all of this is that it's going to be similar to Battlefield's operations. I think it's going to be where you have an attacking team and a defending team where the attacking team will slowly work through a map by capturing points to gain total control. So it's basically like delayed strongholds, <laughs> I guess. But uh, moving on to some of the other mechanics, they were talking about how for each game of Big Team Battle, they wanted it to feel fresh. So apparently, they have invested heavily in systems that change up each match. So in one map, we even have some new ways for players to get a cachet of power by interacting with the map in a whole new way with their personal AI. Honestly, I really like this idea. Maybe this is just me, but when I was reading that paragraph, the impression I got was if you're down by like 10 or 20 kills, you might be able to grab a buddy and go to a certain area of a map, unlock a certain room, and be able to have access to power weapons like rocket launchers or snipers that'll allow you to get kills and turn the tide of the battle. I think that sounds really cool, and I'm, I'm interested to see how it works. But it doesn't stop there. 343 have also been changing up the mechanics for a few other things, like vehicles. Now, vehicles will be working very differently. You will have your normal starting vehicles at the very beginning of a game, but powerful vehicles like the Scorpion, for example, won't actually be spawning in at the very beginning. They will spawn in towards the end in the middle of the map and they will be something that players will want to fight for control over to make sure that their team has the Scorpion to be able to win the game and not allow the other team to make a comeback. I mean, the idea behind this sounds okay, but for certain players who are just ridiculously skilled with the Banshee and the Scorpion, they may seriously hate this idea that they can only get the vehicles that they really love towards the end. So I think 343 has had a decent idea, but I'm just not really too sure on how the community might react to this. So I guess we'll have to see how that goes. This next bit of info might be nothing, but I noticed that one of the developers was talking about their favorite moments from the playtesting that they have done for Big Team Battle, and in it, they mentioned that they used a repulsor to flip over a Razorback. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is absolutely crazy. Uh, we've seen a repulsor be used for a few different things, but I think that's really impressive that it has such flexibility because that allows you to have different layers of gameplay. It allows you to do different things with the same piece of equipment. Uh, so we've seen it actually used before to give yourself a boost in your jump and get to higher parts of a map and it can also be used to reflect an overcharged plasma shot. So, I don't know about you guys, but I am really excited to have a go at this and experiment with what you can do with this thing in-game. One other thing that I wanted to talk about was the training mode. So, in this mode, apparently you can edit a lot of the details and actually allow yourself to have the perfect environment to practice your Halo craft. So I'm a really big fan of this and I love the idea, but it does get even better. You can actually specify and change a lot of the settings so that you've basically got a normal multiplayer map. You can have bots that are just running around and they don't shoot you. You can set it so that you don't have any risk of dying and that you have a bottomless clip on a sniper. Like, that's the perfect training environment to get better at using the sniper. Like, just having bots that you can run around and hunt down with the sniper to get better, I think that's great, and that's exactly what I think a lot of us Halo players would really appreciate to get good at the game. Wow, I cannot believe that I just went through surface level detail and it already took me that long. <laughs> Hidden Xperia's video is going to be like fucking half an hour. <laughs> uh, anyway, though. I think that's a good point to call it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Thank you all for all of the support lately, I really appreciate it, it means a hell of a lot to me and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so we can hit 1k before Halo Infinite drops, it would mean the world to me. But anyway, that's about it from me, I'll see you all on the next video. I've been Kiv. And I'm out.